A few weeks ago, I made this throwaway TikTok where I said NFL teams should ditch their color rush jerseys and rebrand the Thursday night game to Throwback Thursday where every team that plays on Thursday would wear their best historical uniform. This made me obsess over what was each team's best throwback uniform. So I decided I was gonna be the Jersey authority on every NFL team, picking their best uniform, telling you why, and then ultimately ranking every Jersey against one another in an all encompassing tier list because not all throwbacks are equal. But before that, I would just like to say that I've appreciated everyone tuning in on my recent videos, the positive comments, and the overall chill community forming around my content. I am currently knocking on the door of the YouTube partner program, which would be awesome to get to on this video. I have a ton of content that I've already shot and am in the process of editing. So if this is your first time here, welcome. Consider subscribing to help me get to that threshold. And once I become a YouTube partner, I will make a follow up to this video where I rank every NFL team's worst throwback uniform. Thank you again to those who have already subscribed and for those who are going to during this video. This is gonna be a fun year of content, but back to the list. First, let me lay out the criteria I use to create my selections for each team and the tier list ranking. Ultimately, every team will have just one jersey for this list. I'll give honorable mentions, but this is my personal preference. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. I will try and give 30 to 45 seconds to showcase the uniform, my reasonings behind the pick, and so this video isn't an hour long. I will tend to favor uniforms that are older, having some historical relevance, and have a noticeable difference from the current uniform the teams wear. But you will see that this is easier said than done. Some teams don't have a rich uniform history. For the tier list, it's just a standard tier list. But for the top S tier, I've changed the name to Mount Rushmore, where I will put the top four designs. All right, let's get into it. I'll start with my team and the NFL's most recent uniform rebrand, the Arizona Cardinals. 2001 white jerseys, red pants. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I really feel like the Cardinals missed an opportunity to add a throwback uniform into their current set of uniforms. Many teams such as the Falcons, Giants, and Patriots have implemented this growing trend. But that being said, the best throwback for the Cardinals is the 2001 white jerseys, comboed with the red pants, and most importantly, the original Cardinals logo. This jersey has the iconic Arizona State flag patch that a lot of fans wanted to be included in the rebrand, but wasn't. To me, this jersey brings back memories of a time when the Cardinals weren't necessarily good on the field, but had a lot of fun players, like Jake Plummer, Pat Tillman, Aeneas Williams, and the fictional Rod Tidwell. Beloved by me, but just an average throwback at best. B tier. Atlanta Falcons, 1998 black jerseys, gray pants. There is a reason the Atlanta Falcons added this jersey to their current roster of jerseys, because it's their best throwback. Some people will try and argue that it's the original red helmet look, and in 2022, with the NFL rules allowing more than one helmet color, the Falcons use their red helmets, but to me, they clash. However, the black helmet, black jersey, and silver pants are the cleanest uniforms the Falcons have ever worn. Not to mention the amount of Falcons legends that wore these jerseys is a pretty impressive list. From Deion Sanders to rookie Michael Vick. And let's not forget the fun Dirty Bird team with Jamal Anderson, Chris Chandler, and Jesse Tuggle that went to the Super Bowl, and not the one from the memes. The simplicity of this jersey makes me want to put it in B tier, but it's just so clean. A tier. Baltimore Ravens. 1996 purple jerseys, black pants. The Baltimore Ravens are one of the younger teams in the NFL, so they don't have a ton of options for throwback jerseys. In fact, they really only have one. The Ravens' current uniforms are so perfectly done. Great logo, unique and awesome color scheme. I see no need to change or even update these uniforms anytime soon. But the original 1996 uniforms for the new Baltimore Ravens seem to be designed in a hurry, like they designed it on the trip from Cleveland to Baltimore. The helmet logo isn't the best, but I do love the Ravens logo on the sleeves. I don't hate this uniform, but compared to the one they designed three years later, which is still their current uniforms, these are lacking. But I wouldn't mind if they wore these original uniforms once a season, preferably against the Browns in the ultimate troll job. They're not the worst, but they're just average. C tier. Buffalo Bills. 
1990s blue jerseys, white pants. The Bills have two very good eras of uniforms in their history. The 1960s and early 70s had the classic silhouette of a standing buffalo on a white helmet, while the 1990s had the charging buffalo on a red helmet. Both are classics. But which is better? To break ties, I will try and see what was accomplished in the uniforms, and what players of note wore the jerseys. So the 90s had four consecutive Super Bowl appearances, with Hall of Famers such as Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and Bruce Smith, while the classic red standing buffalo is most synonymous with O.J. Simpson, an alleged double murderer. Call me old fashioned, but I'm not the biggest fan of murder. So give me the pain of the 1990s red helmets and the wide right nightmares over double homicide. In his book, O.J. Simpson says that he would have taken a bullet or stood in front of a train for Nicole. Man, I'm gonna tell you, that is some bad luck when the one guy who would have died for you kills you. That Solid jersey in the five to 10 range, A tier. Carolina Panthers, 1995 black jerseys, gray pants. The Panthers are another young team in the NFL that doesn't really have a true throwback uniform. Recently, they've slightly modernized the Panther logo, but it's very easy to not notice a difference at all. In cases like this, the Panthers can take other steps in creating a throwback feel. They could use jersey patches, specifically the ones they used in their inaugural season in Carolina. They could also bring the field and stadium into play by painting the end zones and midfield logo in the old original style. Use mid-90s scoreboard animations and even see if the sponsors want to use their old logo and really go all in on the throwback feel. There's some solid ideas there, but just in terms of jerseys, there's no option here. D tier. Chicago Bears, 1969 navy blue jerseys, white pants. The Bears are the first team on this list that possess a classic look that rarely gets messed with, having essentially the same uniform for over 50 years with minor tweaks here and there. But the 1969 uniforms were one of the final seasons their iconic C on the helmet was completely white. This team featured some of the original Bear legends in Gale Sayers and Dick Buckus. This was also the 50th anniversary of the NFL, and the NFL 50 patch was on the left shoulder of every jersey. The key to selling these subtle jersey changes as throwbacks is be meticulous with the details. Give me these giant numbers on the front of the jerseys. But a problem you run into is the jerseys from 1969 are vastly different from today's jerseys. This was an era of jerseys where the sleeves would go well past the elbow. But a way around this would be to have an Under Armour type shirt players would wear under their pads that would look like sleeves but not be as restricting as the 1969 jerseys. Think of a baseball vest jersey with the undershirt sleeves. It's a classic look, but the details are too subtle, C tier. Cincinnati Bengals, 1975 black jerseys, white pants. The Cincinnati Bengals are a team whose current uniforms haven't changed too much since they've adopted the tiger stripes on the helmets in 1981, because they didn't have to. Their striped helmet, jersey, and pants combo is one of the best uniforms in the NFL because of its uniqueness. No other team in the NFL combines their team mascot with their uniforms as smoothly as the Bengals. I can't say the same about these throwback uniforms. The 1975 home unis cannot be described as unique, but they are the original Bengal uniform, with a basic black jersey with classic sleeve stripes and a straightforward helmet that reads Bengals. Like they use letters, they didn't use a logo. Uh, the more I look at these jerseys, the more I dislike them. Sure, they are originals, but damn, they didn't even try. Screw it, give me the mid-90s uniforms. The striped helmets, the block numbering, the leaping Bengal logo on the sleeves. Sure, it's kind of similar to the current uniforms they wear, but you can sell it more with logos and an end zone paint job on the field. God, these are just Browns jerseys with Bengals written on the helmet. Cementing yourself as the little brother team from Ohio from the inception. I'll save these for the worst throwback video. I had to talk my way through that one. It would be D tier if left to the originals, but the Leaping Tiger moves it to at least C. Cleveland Browns, 1957 brown jerseys, white pants. Speaking of football teams from Ohio, the Browns uniform is the sole definition of a classic uniform, the meat and potatoes of NFL fashion. 
Their uniform has rarely been tampered with over the past century, but when it has, it hasn't been good. This franchise has seemingly been cursed since coming back into the league in 1999. So let's take them back to a time when they were champions, when one of the greatest players of all time donned the classic orange and brown. Jim Brown helped the Cleveland Browns win their last championship in 1964, and it's been heartbreak and misery ever since. This was another jersey in the sleeve era, which again is tricky to conform to modern uniforms, but give me the big numbers on the shoulders where the modern stripes are, and put the classic stripes on the sleeves of an undershirt. The player number on the helmet is another touch that gives it that 50s feel. This uniform would also work in either brown or white because both are classic Browns jerseys. Great running back, below average uniform, D tier. Dallas Cowboys. 1994 white jerseys, star shoulders, silver pants. The 1994 season was the last time the NFL ran a league-wide throwback uniform campaign. It was in honor of the league's 75th anniversary and a lot of the jerseys were either hit or miss. This one was a hit. The Cowboys are another team that doesn't experiment a lot with uniforms because of tradition and iconic blah blah blah. But their 1994 throwbacks are a 90s take of their 1960s jerseys. So it's a throwback of a throwback. It's so complex and cool. Just because an idea is overly convoluted and complex doesn't make it cool. You just don't get it because you're not smart enough. Let's move. This jersey debuted on Thanksgiving 1994, right in the heart of the Cowboys dynasty. And the three-headed monster of Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Michael Irving of the early 90s. It's a little gimmicky, but it's iconic with those three players. B tier. Denver Broncos. 1986 orange jerseys, white pants, blue helmets. Denver's most successful years as a franchise coincide with the first years of using their now current uniforms. But before the back-to-back -back Super Bowls, before the helicopter, before th this one's for John, the Broncos were always the bridesmaid, never the bride, under Elway in these classics. They tried using these Frankenstein hybrid throwbacks due to the one shell rule, but these need to stay true to the original colors to be considered the best, but still better than these. Jesus, anything is better than these. If they stay true to the colors, A tier, no question. Detroit Lions, 1994 blue jerseys, silver pants. The Lions usually roll out a throwback every year on Thanksgiving. The problem is it's always that all silver helmet with no logos and plain blue uniform. It's boring. The point of wearing a throwback is to bring fans a sense of nostalgia. Bring back memories of their favorite players and their favorite games. Who wore these and when? Exactly, I don't know either. Give me the Barry Sander blues all day. The late 80s and early 90s, back to a time before the Lions were 0-16. Remembering what a Lions playoff victory feels like. And before the Lions ran off not one, but two Hall of Famers into early retirement. I have never considered being a Lions fan, but I would buy and wear a Barry Sanders throwback. A tier. Green Bay Packers. 1966 green jerseys, yellow pants. The Packers are yet another team that you can't really mess with their uniforms because of how iconic they are. They have virtually been the same since the early 60s. For those of you wanting to see the Acme Packer jerseys or those gold shoulder abominations, I ask why. Sure, they are different, but different isn't always good. The 1966 uniforms are similar to the ones they wear now. But again, the key to selling these as throwbacks is getting the subtle details right. The 1966 helmets seem to be a flat mustard color compared to the sheen of the current ones. And even the placement of the G decal seems to be lower on the 66 helmets. These are yet another sleeve jerseys and we've talked about how that could be solved. Even the pants seem to be a slightly different shade of yellow with a very thin stripe down the side. If all the little details are met nicely, this could be a very noticeable change that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Admittedly, a Bears-Packers sleeved throwback game would be a fun Thursday night game. If you get every detail of this right, the ceiling is only C tier. Houston Texans, 2002 white jerseys, navy pants, red socks, inaugural patch. The Houston Texans are hands down the hardest team on the list to find a throwback for, and because they really don't have one. They've had this jersey style for their entire existence. 
I had to get real nitpicky and creative to find a solution. Like to reuse the inaugural patch they used in 2002, and the clashing red socks that they no longer wear. It's honestly a stretch to call these throwbacks, but it's, it's all I got. The Texans are victims of circumstance. You can only make so much history in 21 years. Indianapolis Colts, 1956 blue jerseys, white pants, horseshoe on the back. When an NFL team knows their best throwback, they try to use it as often as they can. And the Indianapolis Colts definitely know their best throwback is the 1956 Blues, with their iconic horseshoe logo on the back of the helmet instead of on the sides. These have made fairly regular appearances in recent years, but they could take it to the next level of authenticity with using my idea for modern sleeves. These are simple, but too similar to what they wear now. I don't think I can put these in B tier. I think I gotta put them in C. Jacksonville Jaguars, 1995 teal jerseys, white pants. The Jaguars have been in a uniform rut over the last 15 to 20 years, constantly rolling out new uniforms every five years, trying to get one that resonates with the fans of but they keep missing the mark and rolling out uninspired jersey after uninspired jersey. Which is unfortunate because the first jersey in franchise history is arguably the best jersey so far. With a solid color scheme, this jersey reminds you of classic forgotten players like Mark Brunel, Keenan McCardell, and Fred Taylor. And let's not forget ending Dan Marino's career. For such a young team, this is a pretty solid jersey, B tier. Kansas City Chiefs, 1962 Dallas Texans red jerseys, white pants. The Chiefs are another team whose uniforms haven't really changed ever. But when the team was founded, they actually played in Dallas when the AFL and the NFL's Cowboys expanded into Texas simultaneously. The Chiefs were initially called the Dallas Texans and sported these uniforms that definitely have the Chiefs feel to them. But these are different enough where the normal person would be able to notice that they're even throwbacks at all. It is a little weird repping a completely different city, but it's really all the Chiefs have. Throw the AFL logo patch on these and call it a day. I almost want to put these in the D tier, but I can't. They are a completely different franchise. C tier. Las Vegas Raiders, 1963 white jerseys, silver pants, gold numbers. When you think of the Raiders, you think of the moniker, the silver and black. But when the team was founded, it was more of the black and gold. The 1963 jerseys are the lost jerseys of the Raiders. It was a transitional jersey between the foreign looking black and yellow jerseys from the first three seasons to the silver and black uniforms we all know today the ones that have basically been untouched for the last 50 years. Plus the gold is a nice touch now that the team plays in Las Vegas. I'm starting to see a trend between the classic looking teams. They don't rank as high because they don't stray too far from what works. C tier. Los Angeles Chargers, 1966 powder blue jerseys, yellow pants. The Chargers have hands down the best uniform collection in football. Anything they decide to wear on Sundays always looks sharp. But one of the most iconic uniforms of all time are the 1966 Powder Blues. Just saying the term Powder Blues and most NFL fans will immediately know you're talking about the Chargers. Especially for these throwbacks, you need to get the small details right because the modern day uniforms draw heavily from the past. I'm talking the white numbers with no outlines. The lightning bolt logo on the sleeves in the white stripe the blue bolt on the pants, and the original number font on the helmet numbers for that 60s feel. These are top tier. Mount Rushmore of throwbacks, no question. Los Angeles Rams, 1979 white jerseys, yellow pants. The Rams have bounced between uniform looks like they've bounced between cities. Yellow horns, white horns, back to yellow, then to gold horns, back to yellow, the theme being that they always revert back to yellow because that color combination of yellow and blue works the best. The 1979 jerseys were worn for over 20 years, and in those 20 years they saw two Super Bowls. One when they were in LA and lost, and one when they were in St. Louis and won. This is a classic look that lasted two decades, saw two Super Bowls, A tier. Miami Dolphins, 1972 teal jerseys, white pants. The undefeated season with a Super Bowl victory, doesn't get much better than that. Pick either the home or away jersey, it does not matter. 
the whites are clean, and the teal are unmistakably the Dolphins. You know when a team's fan base is actively petitioning to bring back a uniform full time? You've done something right. That Miami teal will never not be A tier, and it just missed out on my Mount Rushmore. Minnesota Vikings, 1998 purple jerseys, white pants. 2023 would mark the 25th anniversary of the greatest Minnesota Vikings team ever. From greats like Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Randall Cunningham, and John Randall, this team was stacked going 15-1 in the regular season. I understand this season feels like a waste because they didn't make it to the Super Bowl, but heartache and pain comes with being a Minnesota Vikings fan. So look back fondly on this season and just don't invite Gary Anderson to the reunion game when you wear these. This team was so good, but these uniforms are just average. B tier. New England Patriots, 1984 red jerseys, white pants. Growing up in New England, I know firsthand that the Patriot Pat logo is beloved by the fans. There is no other choice in their eyes. It's even been officially added to their current uniform roster as an alternate throwback. I personally like the mid-90s Drew Bledsoe era jerseys. These uniforms definitely took some style risks. 3D numbers, massive logos on the shoulders, and an interesting soccer jersey style shading on the chest. And I think they worked pretty well overall. They are definitely very 1990s, but ultimately the Patriot Pat unis get the nod because they are tried and true. I'm gonna put these in the B tier, but know that they are the best of the B tier. New Orleans Saints, 1967 black jerseys, gold pants. These are throwbacks to the first jersey in franchise history, and they wore these recently for a game in 2022. They look very clean, but if I was to add one note, I wish they would go all out with the details. That matte dark gold on the helmet with the oversized logo would definitely make it feel late 60s. But other than that, a solid jersey, and I'm glad they brought it back. It's a solid jersey, but again, it just doesn't stray too far. C tier. New York Giants. 1990 blue jerseys, white pants. In my original TikTok, I used the Giants as an example of a jersey that would pique my interest in viewing a Thursday night game. The 1990s uniform with that spelled out Giants on the helmet and the classic blue with the red and white stripes definitely reminds you of that Super Bowl winning team led by LT. These uniforms were added as their official throwback alternate and who can blame them? Roger Goodell would never allow it, but slapping the Super Bowl 25 patch on it would be a pretty sweet addition. I'm definitely putting this in the top half of the A tier. New York Jets, 1963 green jerseys, white pants, Jet logo. This is the most slept on throwback of all time. The fact that they only wore this for one season is borderline disrespectful. The 1963 uniform was given up on far too quickly. The Silhouette Jet helmet might be the best helmet in franchise history, and it only lasted one season. One. Imagine if they had worn these for Joe Namath's Super Bowl guarantee. I've scoured the internet trying to find any footage of the Jets playing in these uniforms. The fact that the Jets have never brought these back themselves is a huge missed opportunity. I want to put this A tier, but I can in good faith do that because it only lasted one year. Philadelphia Eagles, 1989, green jerseys, white pants. Newly leaked photos of a Jalen Hurts Kelly green jersey all but confirms the Eagles are bringing back these buttes in 2023, for the first time since 2010. The Kelly green look spanned 50 years and encompasses nearly all of Philadelphia Eagles history. This is a perfect throwback uniform, because when you see it, you immediately know it's the Eagles and it is different enough from the present day uniform to give it that retro feel, which is a must for a good throwback. This is my second spot on the throwback Mount Rushmore. Pittsburgh Steelers, 1960s black jerseys, white pants, yellow helmets. The Pittsburgh Steelers are yet another franchise that uniforms have remained relatively untouched for decades because of their current uniform's classic look. Rich with tradition, history, six Super Bowls, yada, yada, yada. The Steelers really only have three throwbacks to choose from. 
the bumblebees, which are atrocious, these yellow diamond shoulders that made everyone look like they were wearing giant cowboy collars, or these yellow helmet ones, which with the NFL allowing different color helmets, you might as well take advantage of. Hey, it's a classic look that's noticeably different. B tier. San Francisco 49ers, 1994 red jerseys, white pants. The Joe Montana jerseys are a classic, and these jerseys they wear today are clearly going for that look, which in my opinion hurts these uniforms if they wanted to bring them back. That's why I went for the 1994 jerseys. They have the distinct numbers with the shadow effect that not a lot of teams have ever tried. Not to mention, they won the Super Bowl this season they wore these. So the Niners could flex on the rest of the league if they wanted to put both the Super Bowl patch and the NFL 75th patch on them. I'm not a Niners fan, but these jerseys are pretty good. B tier. Seattle Seahawks, 1987 blue jerseys, silver pants. During the editing of this video, the Seahawks announced they would be bringing this jersey style back for a game in 2023, which furthers my belief that this is the most legitimate and indisputable throwback list of all time. This uniform is very Seattle. It brings back memories of the Kingdom, Steve Largent, and a time when the Seahawks were in the AFC and not the most annoying team in the NFC West. I think these uniforms connect with the home city more than any other uniform, A tier. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 1977 orange creamsicle jersey, white pants, original Bucko Bruce logo. This jersey is very polarizing. A lot of people love it, and a lot of people think it's ugly. And I tend to side with both sides. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top. I love it. But I can also see in terms of an NFL jersey, it stands out unlike any other on this list. The color combination alone is so unique. People say it's ugly because it's very 1970s. And the 70s as a decade did not age very well at all. But this jersey is so ugly, it's beautiful. And we can all rejoice because it is officially coming back in 2023. Mount Rushmore, immediately. Tennessee Titans, 1997 baby blue jerseys, white pants. This one is gonna be slightly controversial. Not as much as the last team on this list, but controversial nonetheless. During the 2023 NFL Draft, Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy tweeted out a picture of the Tennessee Titans war room where somebody was wearing a Houston Oilers hat, saying it should be illegal for anyone in the Titans organization to do so. As a former Montreal Expos fan myself, I can relate to that sentiment. I hated when the Nationals wore the baby blue Expos jerseys as a throwback in 2019. And did it help them win the World Series that season? Probably. But it wasn't their team and it wasn't their history. But technically when the Oilers moved to Tennessee, they were called the Tennessee Oilers for the first two seasons. It is a technicality, but to leave these uniforms off this list would be criminal in itself, because these are some of the most beautiful uniforms in NFL history. And somebody should probably warn Portnoy because these two are officially coming back in 2023. Mount Rushmore, now. Washington Commanders, 1969 maroon jerseys, mustard pants. Ah, the moment you've all been waiting for, unless you've skipped to the end because you are impatient and you hate giving me watch time. The Commanders have, in my opinion, the best color combo in NFL history, even though they're trying to ruin it with black. But to find their best throwback, we need to go back and look at their past uniforms to try and find one that would be acceptable in this day and age. The Redskins uniforms from 1972 to 2019 would be my pick for throwback, but that name and logo are the reason this is so controversial in the first place. Not to mention they wore these four years ago, which doesn't really make them a throwback. But the NFL probably wouldn't even allow it, continuing the very American tradition of eliminating any signs of Native Americans from everyday life. Will be dangerous and difficult, and will be known forever as walk of shame. <clears throat> um, Caleb, it was called the Trail of Tears. Not the Walk of Shame. It was also called the Walk of Shame. No, it wasn't. 
It was never called that. It was called the Trail of Tears. The Walk of Shame is something else entirely. The R logo definitely wouldn't fly because it's highlighting the very letter people are associating with the R word slur, so it's out. The 1969 Spear Helmet could be a happy medium compromise because it alludes to the culture of Native Americans without slurs or the direct depiction of Native people. But I can already hear a white liberal arts college student screaming that this negatively depicts Native Americans as hostile warrior savages. So that's out too, I guess. And if that's too offensive, we can go all the way back to the late 50s, early 60s when the helmet was just a plain maroon, but instead of a stripe down the middle, it was a feather with a red tip. This was a uniform and helmet combination I had never seen from the Redskins before. And while it's not the most visually appealing, it's definitely the most unique. And if that's too offensive, then I do not know what to tell you. As to which one is the best throwback, I will let y'all fight that one out in the comments. I don't want to touch that with a 40 foot pole. What's the big deal? Why won't anybody talk about this? And there you have it, all 32 teams best throwback uniform ranked. Let me know down in the comments which one you liked best did I miss the mark on your team? And I'll try and justify my logic with a response. Also subscribe to see the worst throwbacks for every team when that comes out. If you wanna see my Cardinals jersey concept I did before their rebrand, you can click here. Thanks for watching and 